prosper. Guys. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, it won't work. No weapon that's formed against me will prosper. said he would do he's not a man that he should lie he'll stand by his word no weapon formed against me shall prosper no it won't work no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper church good morning church it is a blessings to be in God's house this morning I welcome you 
Today is uh, the second Sunday in our Lenten uh, season. We, I, I pray that uh, you are uh, diving into the Lenten devotionals and how you have, uh, you see, um, we have that relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we go through this journey all the way to Calvary. And we pray for those who are here in the sanctuary, and also we pray for those who are at home. We'll be watching uh, later in our YouTube. We pray that God give you a special blessing. Let us rise together as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God and Father, we thank you this morning uh, for bringing us into your presence. Uh, for uh, giving us the joy that we have in our heart this morning, Lord God, a joy the world cannot give us, a joy no one else in this world cannot give us but your Son, Jesus Christ. And today we have it, and we have a hope, and we have peace with you, and we have access to you this morning. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us as we worship and sing and listen to your word. May this time will be a time of blessing, who will take this blessing to the world around us, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We remain standing, and our opening hymn this morning is, Lift Every Voice and Sing, Hymn 296. Hymn 296, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Oh, hey. 
and sing and we know the angels also are before the throne of God singing with us and we know the angels are between uh, before the throne of God rejoicing with God because of us because of the saints who have been uh, redeemed by the blood of our Savior our Lord Jesus Christ we have the relationship we have the access to come before God no matter what our sin is because Jesus said he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that's why when doubt comes in our heart and when we want to uh, take matters in our own hand, then Jesus is here standing by and waiting for us, trying to hold our hands and to lead us to the path we need to go. And that's why in our time of confession and absolution, we will ask God, to forgive our sins, to forgive our wrong thoughts and everything that is happening in our heart, make, it, make us doubt um, our, the promise that God has for us. I invite you this morning to sit or kneel as we go to God in prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near to God with a heart and confess our sins, asking God to heal us and set us free for our sins done and unknown. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near to God with a and confess our sins, asking God to heal us, bless us, and set us free for our sins known and unknown. Let us now confess our sins before our gracious Father. I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I'm sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray for your boundless grace and mercy to reign in my life forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all our sins. God is merciful, 
Therefore, as a called and ordained servant, I give voice to his grace and grant you the forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. I am free. Yes, we are free. We are free to come before God. We are free to have a relationship with him because of his son, Jesus Christ. We have a friendship with him now. Uh, we have peace with him. As the word of God is telling you today from uh, the apostle Paul, we have peace with God and we have access to him to go to him. And that's why this morning we are going to pray. Pray for our church. Pray for our country. Pray for our church leaders. And pray for our members of the church who are, are going through sometimes. And we know in this world there will be tribulation. That is, the, uh, that is what is going on in this world because of sin. But we will pray that God give them strength. God give them courage knowing that they are not alone in this work. They are not alone in this journey. And one day, everything will be over because the promise that Jesus Christ has made to us. Let us go to God in prayer this morning. Lord God, Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you knowing that you have given us the access to come to you. We do not have to go to someone to ask for forgiveness and then they will go to you. But we know through Jesus Christ, your son, we have direct access to you. That's why we pray that you hear our prayer as we confess everything, as we bring our pain, as we bring our suffering to you so that we can heal us. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, this morning we pray that you give your Holy Spirit that we might deny ourselves, take up the crosses you give and follow your son through this troubled and all the way to life in heaven. We pray that we prepare us to give up one lives and give us our life knowing that the Christ has already saved them and then has already won the victory for us. Lord, in your mercy. Our Lord, we pray this morning that you give the church and all our servants grace to fulfill the ministries to which you have committed them. We pray also that you grant each of us the strength to confess Christ boldly before the world. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray that you teach us to shun neither our Lord's suffering nor our own. When we endure persecution or uh, difficult days for being your children, and we pray that you give us faith and perseverance. As you have promised, deliver us out of hand of the wicked and redeem us from the grave from the grasp of the ruthless lord in your mercy our god our father abraham was only one when you called him but you blessed him and multiplied him we pray that you protect mothers with child and equip fathers to lead and raise their household in your fear and in your love. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, all kingship belongs to you. And you rule over the nations. And we pray for, for the blessing of, the, of your people. We pray for this nation. We pray for the president and all the leaders and the governors that they may rule wisely and in accordance with your will lord in your mercy our lord jesus christ you are our great physician we pray that you heal and restore those who are sick and shut in we pray that you heal those who feel that they are not great physically 
because you are the God of health, you are the God who can heal them, we pray this morning, wherever they are, give them a touch. Wherever they are, let them feel your spirit as the church stand and pray to you. And we know that you are by their side. Let them feel your presence as we pray to you. Give them your holy care and strengthen to bear your cross. That they may endure to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, at your table the afflicted eat the body and blood of your Son and are satisfied. Through our afflictions, we pray that you deepen our hunger for the table, that we may eat and drink and be satisfied by Christ's saving life. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you receive our praise this day for St. Peter and his confession that Jesus is the Christ. We rejoice that your son builds his church upon this rock and that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Keep us in this faith all our days through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and also who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. This is the freedom that we have now, a freedom to come to God, a freedom to have a relationship and to have a, a conversation with our Savior. And all this is possible because of his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now time for us to go to God's word. And the first lesson this morning is coming from Genesis chapter 17, uh, verses 1 through 16. And the second one is coming from uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And we will have a special selection. And afterwards we will, be, we will stand and we read together um, the gospel lesson, which has come from Mark chapter 8, verses 27, and there's a typo here, it's through 38, verse 27 through 38. May God bless you as uh, Dick and Martin go and read in the first two lessons. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The book of Genesis, the 17th chapter, the first 16 verses. The contract between God and man. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down. And God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram, exalted father, but your name will be Abraham, father of a multitude. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, 
As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your generations after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. Whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her, and I will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our brother Paul gives us an insight into the hope and peace that we have because of Jesus. We look at Romans 5, the first 11 verses of that chapter. Our brother writes, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace through which we stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have then now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shining in the midst of the darkness shining Jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations 
with grace and mercy send forth your word lord and let there be light your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance by the blood I may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me as we glaze on your kingly brightness so our faces display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell the story shine on me shine on Jesus shine fill this land with your father's glory play spirit place set our hearts on fire flow river flow flood the nations with grace and mercy send forth your word Lord, and let there be light. Lord, and let there be light. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now we rise for the gospel lesson this morning. Our gospel lesson is coming from the book of Mark, in chapter 20, I mean chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Let me know when you're there by saying amen. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say that I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them 
when he comes in his father's glory with the holy angel. This is the word of the Lord. As we stand, we will be singing, I am trusting you, O Lord, and this hymn is printed for us, I am trusting you, O Lord. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you, trusting you for full salvation, free and true. I am trusting you for pardon at your feet I bow. The mercy trusting now. I am trusting you for cleansing in the crimson flood. Trusting you to make me whole. Trusting you for power, you can never fail. Words which you yourself shall give me must prevail. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, never let me fall. I am trusting you forever and for all. And now we confess our faith in the Nicene Creed. And this confession is fourfold. The first one is to glorify our Father in heaven. And the second is to have a better understanding of the object of our faith. And the third is to be able to express our faith to others. And the fourth is to know what we are testifying as we verbalize our faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Begotten of his Father before all worlds, God from God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophet. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. This is my confession and my belief. Amen. 
Amen. The, the peace of the Lord be with you. Together we share the peace of God with uh, your neighbor around you. The peace of God be with you. Please, you may be seated. And our sermon hymn this morning is Hymn 285. Praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. Him 285. Praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. Glory, 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 Jesus. Blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun, until the going down of the same, He's worthy, Jesus is worthy, He's worthy to
In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Someone once complained about me when they said, you know what, it would be nice if I understood exactly what I was saying. Well, I can only say that most people have had many complaints, but one of them has always never been that they didn't know what I was saying. But I will accommodate my friend with the following statement. Jesus is going to ask you a very important question, and that question is, don't you get it? Are you that clueless? I'm going to ask you to pick up your Bibles, both here in the sanctuary and at home, and I'm going to ask you to turn to the Gospel of Mark, the eighth chapter. Our Gospel message was the last part of that chapter, but I'm going to back up a little bit to a moment when Jesus was a little frustrated with his disciples and to illustrate that he might be a little frustrated with us. But don't worry. That's what Lent is for. I was trained in the sciences, and one of the things that people talk about in the sciences are standards. This is a yard. That is a meter. This is a kilometer. You have these exact measurements, and they precisely check them every now and then. Why? Because sometimes they how shall I say it, Ble change. They don't really change, we just don't get as precise as we should be. How many accidents happen because of inches? I thought I had enough room to get in that parking space. Right? You've had that happen to you at least once. Here is Jesus in the boat, crossing the Sea of Galilee as he did many, many times. He had just finished feeding 4,000 people, miraculously. And when they get into the boat, it says that they only had one loaf of bread. This is in Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark 8, verse 14. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. They discussed with each other and said, it is because we have no bread. Aware of this discussion, Jesus asked them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember when I broke the five loaves of the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they responded. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? And they answered seven. And he said to them, do you still not understand? This is the word of the Lord. Here is Jesus telling his disciples. These are the people that have been listening to him and seeing him do wonders and talking to the people. And he tells them, don't you get it? Have you been blind and deaf all this time? And to answer the question about what, you go back to verse 15. What is the warning that Jesus gives? Be careful. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. What does that have to do with the price of bread? Well, I'll tell you. Who are the Pharisees? They were the hyper-believers, the uber-believers. If you want to put it in modern terms, they were the Karens of theology. They were very, very picky, right? You, you know at least one friend of yours who is very, very picky. If something is off by an inch, they'll walk over, move it, then come back to you and say, why was that out of place? Don't tell me you've never had that happen to you at least once. 
The Pharisees, Jesus would later say, take these huge burdens and put them on people without lifting one finger to help them. Fatal, fatal, fatal. Jesus condemned them rightly because they didn't care as much about God as they cared about themselves. They were the uber faithful. And Jesus says, whitewashed tombs. Outside looks beautiful. Inside, corrupt, filthy bones. And then on the other side, you have Herod. In this case, none other than our friend Herod Antipas, who had a religion, but did he let it get in the way of killing people or stealing from people or doing anything he wanted? You tell me the answer. All together now. One, two, three. No. He did what he wanted and gave justification in the name of God. Does that sound familiar to you? Have you heard that in the last seven days? I bet you have. Jesus tells us that these are leaven. What do you know about leaven, a.k.a. yeast? You put a little in, and what does it do? It starts growing. It starts multiplying. It fills the entire loaf. Now, if the leaven is good, that's all right. You like raised bread, right? But if the leaven is bad, it's poison. It's like the old joke. It's not a joke, but it's an old joke. How many cancer cells does it take to kill a person? One. Why? Because they don't stay single. They multiply and they grow, and suddenly the doctor says, you're going to have to operate because you've got the C. And it all started with one tiny little cell. What is Jesus saying here? Jesus is warning us that the world, the flesh, and the devil want to poison your faith. The Pharisees on the one side and the Herodians on the other side are just two examples of how the world tries to take your faith and twist it. Turn it into something besides what it is. I mean, just to give you an example, pardon me, I've got some notes here. I want to make sure I get them right. Here's something that Paul told Timothy that was very, very wrong. This is in 1 Timothy 6, third verse and following. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about worlds that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, constant friction between people of a corrupt mind, robbed of the truth, who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. Gee, he's talking about both groups, isn't he? He's got the pickies on the one side and the ones who want to use the faith for political or social purposes. Uh, no, I'm not going to make a political statement except to once again ask you as Christians, is this man or woman who is running for office going to do things in a godly fashion? No, find someone else. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm going to tell you what Jesus wants you to do in terms of all of your actions. As for Timothy, I'm sorry, as for Paul, when he writes to the Romans, he talks about people who, quote, have been filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. I could go another three verses, but I think you get the point. These are supposed to be believers in God who have heard this word and have said, yes, I believe in Jesus. 
then why aren't you acting like him? I mean, if you saw a $3 bill, would you try to spend it? I don't think so. You're smart enough to know that the word for that $3 bill is counterfeit. And yet some people practice counterfeit Christianity every day. And Jesus is saying, beware of this. And beware of letting yourself end up caught. The trouble with wearing a robe is that if you're not careful, you think you know more than other people. And God Almighty has made it perfectly clear to Martin T, you are a sinner too. So, get on your knees, confess your sins, and yield to my spirit. Yes, sir. I say yes, sir, because you know what happens to people who do not listen to God? Ask Pharaoh of Egypt. How many gods did he have? Ten. How many plagues did he have? Ten. How many of those plagues were stopped by those gods? Zero. That's what happens when you don't listen to God Almighty. And Jesus is telling them in the boat between one miracle and another, haven't you gotten it? But it's not totally bad because remember, after this, he asks them, who am I? What does Peter say? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Ding! He got it right. But then he tells them that he has to die. He has to suffer. He has to be turned over to his enemies. He has to be killed on a cross and then rise again. What does Peter do? Pulls him aside and says, no, 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 no. And what does Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. See, Peter had it, and then he didn't. The whole point behind the word is to remind us that this can happen to you and to me. Do not let this happen to you. And this is a very important point. Do you get it? Remember that first hymn you sang? Lift every voice and sing. Did you really read that third verse, which is a prayer? And the prayer was, lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee, lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. It happened to the children of Israel. It happened to the kings of Israel, Saul, David, and Solomon. It happened again and again and again. We get so into ourselves that we forget what God wants us to do. And what does God want us to do? Well, it's not a very nice thing. You see this around my neck? What is it? It's a cross. It's the symbol of Christianity. Why? Because of what you saw in this gospel in chapter 8, in verses 34 and 35. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, wait for it, and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. This is the part where people get a little irritated because basically what Jesus is saying is, if you want to follow me, you have to die. You have to kill your lusts. You have to kill your ambitions. You have to kill your greed. You have to kill your desire to be liked. You have to kill everything, and not for any esoteric thing or any humanistic thing. It says, whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Jesus is not saying suffering saves you. The gospel saves you. To suffer because you are a busybody 
or hateful or angry or anything like that gets you nothing. To suffer for the gospel of Jesus Christ, living the gospel of Jesus Christ, obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, and having people look at you and go, hmm, he's an idiot, he's crazy. How many times have I been called crazy for believing in Jesus? A lot. How many times have you been called crazy? I hope a lot. Because remember what Jesus says. If you're ashamed of him, if you're afraid of what people think, then on the day of judgment, Jesus will say, well, I wanted you to be mine, but you're not. But if you are unafraid, if you stand up before the world and say, I am for Jesus Christ, and nothing's going to stop me. You know what Jesus does on his throne? Well done. Which do you want to hear? Did you get it? Are you going to get it? This is the perfect time, because what is Lent? Lent is where you rip out your faith, and you look at it, and you take the word of God and you measure it and you see, oh, I'm not as charitable as I should be. Oh, my words are not exactly clean. Oh, those thoughts. This is the time when the Christian church as a whole turns inside and says, what does Jesus want me to do about this? What, Holy Spirit, will you do to help me about this? This is our time. Because the fact of the matter is, Jesus wants you healed. Remember that time he was in Nazareth, and he told them he was the Messiah? And you know what they said? This is the hometown boy. We know him. We changed his nappies. He can't be the Messiah. And the scripture says that he could do very few wonder works, miracles, because they're of their unbelief. Don't let this happen to you. I'll ask it again. Did you get it? Are you going to get it? Are you going to listen to what Jesus is saying? The grace of his gospel is here for you, and it's here for you to share to a world that gets almost no grace at all. That is our call as Christians, to die to the Pharisees and the Herodians' leaven, and to live in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you get it? Will you get it? Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that your gospel is clear, that you make it clear that we can be yours. Help us listen. Give us eyes that see, ears that hear, and hearts that are open to your word. Let us pray for each other, care for each other, live with each other as brothers and sisters in your grace. Let the world see that the gospel is real and that the people of the gospel are real as well. As always, we yield to you. We give you praise and glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Peace.
Thank you, uh, say music team, for this beautiful um, uh, music. And we thank God for his word, and we thank God for um, the message that he brought us uh, to remind us that um, Jesus Christ is always with us. And thank, we thank God also for the blessing that he's given us, and we thank God for the opportunity that he has given us to bring uh, our time and our talents and our treasures uh, to his kingdom. So in this spirit, we will sing together, uh, give thanks to receive our tithes and offerings together. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ. Son. And now let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am weak, because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say let the poor say I am free because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Thanks even to God. We ask you to rise as we continue to be thankful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for everything that He has given us and the opportunity that we have to bring back a portion of this to His kingdom so that we can continue to share this gospel so the whole world may get God's word. Let us sing together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you.
you for your blessings and thank you for the peace that we have in you. Now we have access to you and we are rejoicing for the hope that we have in you, Lord God, knowing one day that we will be with us. We may not get it now because we're still living in this world. We may not, we may doubt you at times, but, but every day, Lord God, we wake up and we know it is your blessing. Well, if they will wake up, we know it is because of you and because of the promise that you made to us and you hold your words together so that we live by faith and we live in your grace. And we thank you for uh, the opportunity we get to bring that uh, our times, our talents and our treasures to you so that we can continue to share the good news of this gospel to the world around us so they also may come to the knowledge they also may have peace with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, we will sing together. We will turn our hymnal in page 30 uh, in the front of your hymnal uh, where we will have this song to, in preparation for uh, coming to uh, uh, this uh, communion together as we sing um, This is the Feast, page 30 in the front of your hymnal. This is the Feast of Victory for God. Set us free to be people of God. Riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. This is the feast. Savior Jesus Christ on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and after giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way also after supper he took the cup after giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take and drink this is the blood of the new covenant in my, in my blood drink it as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and the peace of the Lord be with you. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Master, 
something about that
Now we rise for the blessings of God's people. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious and be gracious unto you and be gracious. us together sing the doxology. Uh, closing him and it's him number 73 Jesus keep me near the cross found me there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory till my rain
trusting ever till I wish a golden strand just beyond the river. Let's give God a hand. Let's give God a hand. Amen.